Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you're all very welcome and thank you for attending uh, our June offering of our webinar series, Mental Health in the LGBTI Plus Community. Um, I'll invite our panelists to uh, introduce themselves in, in, in a minute. Yeah, you're, we're delighted to, to welcome uh, Moninia Griffith from Belong To and Dr. Paul Dalton, a uh, clinical psychologist with UCD, and I'll let them further uh, the introduction in a, in a couple of minutes. Just to give you a little bit of a, a brief overview of AWARE and what we do uh, here at AWARE, our, our primary task and our mission is to provide support, information and education to people who experience depression, bipolar disorder and other mood related conditions. And we do that by providing it through our support services and also our educational programs and with the wide repository of information uh, on our, our website soon to be included uh, this uh, uh, webinar series. So we really hope that you enjoy the conversation which I'll host uh, between the three of us. Um, if you have any questions, we really invite you to put them into the Q&A box and uh, we'll endeavor to answer as many questions as we can uh, during the conversation uh, between the three of us, as I say. Um, so without further ado, what I'm going to do now is uh, introduce uh, the panel and allow them to uh, say a few words um, about themselves before we get into the conversation. So if I start with yourself, Moninia. Thanks, Stephen. Hi, everybody. Um, good morning or good afternoon. It's two minutes past. Um, my name is Moninia Griffith. I use she, her pronouns. And as Stephen said, I'm, I'm CEO with Belong To. Um, I joined Belong To about seven years ago now. Um, and we're a national organization for LGBTQ young people. We work with young people in Dublin, aged 14 to 23, and we support a network of, of LGBT youth groups around the country working with young people. Um, over 50 of those groups now exist, I'm happy to say. And we do a lot of work as well in policy and lobbying to try and change legislation and systems and structures that um, uh, cause harm to LGBT young people um, and that includes a lot of work with schools, post-primary schools in particular, to try and make them safe and inclusive. I suppose before I joined Belong To, I was, uh, I'd worked um, in the marriage equality campaign um, and it was a very exciting and um, affirming result of, of the marriage equality referendum, but I knew that we, you know, as important as it was to get that legal and constitutional protection, but it was going to take a lot more time to really undo, first of all, the harm that was already done to a lot of LGBTQ people in Ireland, uh, on this island, but also to um, address the stigma and the prejudice, the things that um, affect LGBT people and um, that are the causes, the root causes of increased risks of mental health issues. So that's why I joined Belong To, because I wanted to continue that work. Um, and I'm delighted to be here with you today and wish everybody a happy Pride. Thank you, Moninia. And over to Paul. <clears throat> Thanks. It's um, lovely to be here with everyone and to share the screen with Moninia and with Stephen. Um, so I'm a clinical psychologist and um, I work um, between UCD and uh, St. Vincent's uh, University Hospital in Ellen Park. Um, and I've done that for uh, many years. And um, I have a particular interest in mental health and kind of how it intersects with policy and when we have a society that treats people unfairly and unequally and um, how that impacts on mental health um, and maybe we can talk about this a little bit later on but, but one of the things i really wanted to say today is that sometimes we psychologists people like me can blame the individual for a depression or anxiety or or shame mm. when in actual fact that's the result of of stigma and prejudice and inequality. So um, I, almost as a, as a kind of an opener, I think I really want to apologize for some of my own um, profession for um, for for blaming individuals as opposed to 
how we might look at wider social injustice and inequality. So I'm particularly interested in that um, and lots of other things. And um, I'm a gay man and um, and that's been that's been um, an enormous um, part of my own flourishing and struggling and coming of age later in life um, and an enormous in many ways an enormous privilege um, so really want to talk around some of those pieces today and um, yeah let's kind of let's see where we go and I think Stephen and I were saying earlier that there's a couple of kind of suggestions as well in terms of resources that we might get to mention before we finish great all, all sounds good sounds great so just I suppose to open things up a, li a, a little bit what, what would you you both see as you know the the um prevailing kind of mental health issues as they play out you know for people presenting uh you, you know for support you know who who you know uh, identify uh, you know and who are part of the uh, lgbti plus community uh, that that would be both similar and uh, perhaps different to in, in general you know mm. what was mm. your sense of that mm. Mm. well i might let you go um uh the clinician well I think um, it's in part of the problem is, um, you know, the um, acronym or the alphabet, the alphabet is getting longer and longer. <laughs> so <laughs> lots of us struggle with that. The, there is, of course, um, incredible uh, complexity and I think unique challenges for members of the LGBTIQ plus community. There is no doubt about that. Um, the research tells us that. Um, and I think anyone who's lived as a minority um, in uh, in society will 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 know that. Um, and I think um, in thinking about today, I thought, God, you know, there's probably kind of three um, important things I think clinically or or psychologically that we'd need to at least mention today. And mm. probably one of the most important of those is is shame. Um, mm. sh sh shame um, has been um, demonstrated um, to be um, a real issue for members of the LGBTI plus community and also um, a, a tool that's been used to, um, to repress um, and to apologize many people. So a real, it's been used as a weapon for many, 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 many years. And I think in Ireland, it was used extremely well and badly as a weapon. Um, and even for younger people um, who didn't maybe grow up in such a shaming environment, there's a kind of a legacy, like it doesn't, it doesn't go away overnight. We, we are kind of, there's an, we, we inherit it, even, even when it's not spoken, it's kind of like, it's kind of in the water nearly. Um, fabric or the fibers of society almost you know and how it's picked up yeah. exactly a little and, and and you know as we say for 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 younger people and sometimes sometimes in very explicit ways but sometimes also in very very subtle soft ways there's something wrong with you you know you're not right it's dirty it's shameful and um, and of course there's a huge link then with shame uh, with anxiety and depression um, so 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 that's something that's that's I hope we can kind of talk a little bit more about but and I'll, I'll stop now the other really really important thing to say is um, what I've experienced in the LGBTI community is incredible community and resilience because mm. we know that people cope well when they are socially connected when they have a support network. And I have to say, um, someone in that community, there is incredible community and strength and joy, vitality and, and resilience. So, so I wanna really stress today, it's not about, it's not all about anxiety and depression and shame. I think it's really important, Stephen, that we give mm. um, th those, those positive, um, those positive protective, 
um, things plenty of plenty of time today too. Great. Yeah, I'm very much encouraging of that too, you know, because it's a message of of hope and uplifting. And it's also something that's very grounded in the truth and the lived experience of people, you know, in, in, in the community, which is great. Go on, yeah. Moninia. But we were, before we came on, on, online there, Stephen, we were talking a little bit about this. And, um, you know, uh, I mean, the big thing to remember is that, you know, being LGBT doesn't mean that you're naturally born with, um, a, a risk of mental health problems of depression yes. or anything like that and um, um, it, it's society it's it's stigma um, all that kind of thing and as Paul said that, that shame or that internalized stigma um, is a major one that we hear um, from from young people and, and certainly that, that would be my own experience as somebody who's coped with um, uh, um, clinical anxiety in my life that's that's definitely uh, something that uh, you know would have uh, added uh, to the rich tapestry of of uh, my own uh, mental health and well-being but um the other thing i suppose for, for young people and older people but um is coming out stress so it's that um mm -hmm. you know fear of family rejection fear of loss of your of peer support um, you know, fear of being kicked out of home, which is a very real fear, less and less, but it still happens. We still get young people um, arriving here uh, with everything they own in a black plastic bag. Um, um, mm. you know, uh, LGBT based discrimination and victimization. So when something awful happens, like the, that, those recent uh, terrible uh, uh, vicious murders of the two gay men, that kind of thing mm. obviously takes a, a toll on individuals as, as well as the, the community's well-being, um, uh, that kind of hate crime. Um, and then LGBTQ conversion efforts as well. So we've heard mm. a little bit more about that. Um, that kind of stuff, you know, conversion um, uh, practices, uh, all that uh, can be very detrimental to LGBT uh, people's mental health um, and well-being. But like I said, like Paul said, we, we have spent quite a number of the last 10 years, I suppose, researching um, uh, the additional risk factors in that. And I, and I think it's, it, it's really important for us to spend more time looking at um, the protective factors and that mm. Some of the most resilient people I know are people within the LGBT community um, that may have gone through incredibly traumatic um, experiences of family rejection, of uh, uh, periods of homelessness, of periods of addiction, um, um, all sorts of things, and yet have come through the other side and um, are thriving um, and have, uh, you know, great lives and, and are content, even happy, um, and contributing to society and leaders in, in, in Irish society. So um, I really look forward to talking a little bit more about some of those uh, those factors. Great. Sure, we, we, yeah. And, and the resourcefulness of it and the developmental aspect of it, because tuning into you both, I, I suppose I'm connecting with this idea of the encouragement to speak you know a, a lot of people in the realm of psychology and psychotherapy would just encourage people to speak and to bear witness to one story and through that social connectedness can come and emerge you know out of that you know so really i i, I think um from listening to both of you speak you know it's just the encouragement for people who are identifying as lgbt you know to come and speak about their story and to bear witness to what they're experiencing in, in the world. Because that I think then goes about challenging uh, kind of, if not dogmatic, but certainly dominant paradigms or dominant positions. So it creates this inclusiveness, I suppose, or that's the aspiration and hope perhaps, is that fair to say? I, I, yeah, um, I, 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 I would think so very, very much so. Um, and I, 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 I think um, that, you know, sh shame, shame loves silence. So in silence, when things aren't articulated, um, shame, to, that, that, that's its natural habitat. It'll flourish mm. in silence. So when we put words on an internal experience of and this goes for humanity, there's, you know, there's actually nothing um 
the, there's nothing specific in uh, LGBTIQ about this piece in, in some ways, but when we put words on mm. dealing of inadequacy, of not being good enough, of mm. being different, of being imperfect, of being afraid that I'll be abandoned, the incredible power that comes with putting words, uh, mm. putting those words out into the world. And I think, Stephen, that is the, that's the changing point. And it was the changing point in the marriage equality referendum, uh, later in repeal, when we began to hear mm. uh, other people. When we, we get a, I think what happens is it gives us a, it gives us, um, it, it's often so that good education should be a window to the world and mm. a mirror back. Mm. So, so in, in, in a way, it, it's when, when, when we put, when we put words on our experience and we have to be wise about that too. Mm. We have to know, we, we have to trust a little something too, in terms of who, who's the right person, who are the right sure. people, when is, when is the right time. Um, and, 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 and Meninia talked about the kind of coming out stress and the idea that what's always struck me is that it never, it never stops because you're constantly, I'm 50 years of age and I'm still coming out. Mm -hmm. I was out swimming last night and there's someone said, oh, are you, are you kids here? I was like, well, I, oh, oh you're married. So, so it's the kind of constant, it's the constant yes. coming out um, and the constant, you know, the, 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 the kind of stress that, that, that comes with that, um, even at this point. Um, in, 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 in life. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Patty talked, spoke about that eloquently, um, you know, the checking yourself. I mean, you constantly, um, I mean, not, not constantly, but I mean, uh, you know, I, I choose to live um, in a, a suburb where there are other uh, queer people. I, I work in a queer organization. I, I choose, to, you know, um, to feel safe and so that I don't have to check myself but you know um there I wouldn't walk in some areas in Dublin city holding my partner's hand um I when we go on holidays I have to think about that kind of stuff all of that adds to a kind of a low hum of of stress um if you like and um and so this is why the, the community, the connection, um, the positive identity, the positive role modeling. So for LGBT young people, when they come in to belong to, it might take them six months to get the courage to come in here. They walk up and down outside the, the street here, then they come in and they might make mm. contact. They might be very withdrawn and, and shy and that. You know, it's within six months that you see them, you know, just blossom because they mm. go, they become to... Um, accept themselves, like themselves, even love themselves, um, mm. uh, make friends, learn about LGBT culture, LGBT history, um, the community, role models, realize that they are not alone and that they are actually part of this wonderful global community of, of people and that we're not one, you're not, there isn't the right way to be gay or the right way to be lesbian or the right way to be, yes. they're all so different and there's a part for everybody in that community, you know, so, you know, all of that kind of, the visibility is so important, being able to see yourself and that's why we talk about in safe schools, why it's so important to have LGBT lives and experiences mm. in the curriculum in posters in books you know so because without that the, the it, it adds to the shame that Paul's been talking about yeah it adds to that feeling of exclusion and why am I excluded I'm excluded because there's something wrong about being LGBT or something not normal or not right and therefore my life experience or people with life experiences like me aren't mm. included in culture, aren't included in history, aren't, 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 you know, on the tally and all that kind of stuff, thankfully, is starting to change. And, you know, um, and, you know, some of the most popular um, adolescent programs on Netflix and other streaming things are have um, stories uh, that aren't the tragic, it's going to end so badly stories, they're just sweet coming of age stories mm. where the characters happen to be LGBT and I think that really shows 
how far we've come mm. um, because certainly when I was uh, much younger and if I was trying to find something on TV or a film it was VHS back in the, back in my day but you know if you were trying to find a film that had LGBT characters in it well especially if they were lesbian they had to be they mm. had to die you know like tragically yeah in the movie you no know, or in the book or whatever and and it would come a long way but and all that kind of stuff adds to that positive identification for yourself and the the the, the letting go of that shame the the, the hold that shame has on on uh, us as individuals and as a community yeah it's very it go on paul yeah sorry Stephen. a big Meninia makes me um, think I um, it sounds like a hundred, but I remember a friend and um, he talked about how he in, he, in the West uh, of Ireland and how he'd go to the library uh, as a kid at lunchtime and it open the dictionary and look at the word homosexual in the dictionary and go, OK, there there, there must be there must be someone else like this it's okay. in, in the dictionary. So that that was I grew up on the East Coast. So we got the filth coming in from the UK. <laughs> so we had EastEnders. And if you remember about 30 more than many years ago in EastEnders, there was a gay, they introduced a gay character in EastEnders. So I was about maybe 15, maybe mm. a, little, a little bit younger. But that was the only representation. Um, and here was a gay man who like lived in a lived in a house and had friends. And went for a pint and, and I was transfixed, you know, because it was the only representation that we had, I, I that I had of someone who was gay and could live an adjusted life and be surrounded by people who loved them and mm. could live somewhere in safety. Mm. So th those things are so, so important. And as Meninia said, thankfully there is, you know, that there, there is there is a change. And, and, and and I think it kind of feeds into that idea of, you know, it it, it takes a village um, to raise a child. It takes a a, a village to raise a, a a son or a daughter um, who's gay, and or questioning or, um, and and if there are parents there, I think uh, parents or friends or aunts or uncles, um just really, really maybe to say that you're an incredibly important part of that village. Mm -hmm. and it's a slow, delicate process. Mm -hmm. um, and what we all remember, actually, what we all remember is not words. We remember feeling. Mm -hmm. Don't be don't, don't try to get it right. Um, but but if the feeling is right and your intention is right. Uh, and I like the idea, I was, because I'm a bit slow on things, but I like the idea that, you know, some years, some years are for asking questions and other years are for having them answered. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a slow process. Be, you know, we need to be gentle, really, really gentle with ourselves um, and, and, and maybe give ourselves a few years to ask the questions and a few years to have them answered. But, but love, Car love carries all of those difficult conversations really 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 does um and and i think that's yeah that's what we kind of want to hold on to go on just uh, go on money yeah yeah parental support is one of the biggest um protective factors parental or, or, or care uh the, the primary cares um um, and then uh, uh, an, another uh, trusted adult or trusted teacher or something like that I, I can also ra ra rank very high in that. But I, I would add to, to what Paul said about very, very often young people will say to me, and I was that I was there. I didn't come out until I was thirty, and I was I expected my parents just to be fine with it straight away, and of course they weren't. It took them a time, and I was very hurt and I was very angry with them. Um, for not uh, accepting me and uh, you know immediately um, and so when I'm talking to young people I say the same thing I said look it's taken you a few years to kind of discover this patch so mm. you know, um, and give them time and hopefully they'll come around and if you know if they don't in the meantime surround yourselves with your 
you know, we call the biological family and the logical family sometimes, you know, your friends, your chosen mm -hmm. family um, who are, are who will give you the support you need. And, and for parents and carers who are who, who may be um, watching this, I, I would agree. Let's get, there's so much information out there now. You could start on the belong to website, belong to.org, but there's mm -hmm. loads of information and, and stuff that you can read, you can watch, you can listen to. It's really about educating yourself um, and and, and giving yourself the space and the time. And I think especially um, as, as more of us, I suppose, especially if you're, you're my age and you've got an adolescent um, a ch a child in your, in your family, um, you, you may have LGB friends, but you may not have know anyone immediately that's trans or non-binary mm -hmm. or gender non-conforming. So it may take a little bit more time, but, but uh, as Paul said, it's not always about getting the language right. I don't even get the language right all the time. And I work in an LGBT youth organization. So, but it is about the showing up and making sure that that person knows that you still love them, no matter mm. how the they identify or who they love. Um, and that you're going to do the work to be a good support to, you know, people, especially around pride this time of the year, say, how can I be a good ally? And I say that, well, the first thing you can do is go and educate yourself. Mm -hmm. There's no mm -hmm. test at the end. You don't get a, a gold medal, but at least you, you know, by, that's a show, a mark of respect, first and foremost, to the person in your life is LGBT because you've gone off to try and find out more about them. But that's, that's it's usually empowering and, and usually um, supportive and a huge protective factor. And for parents who are, you know, think that there might be an LGBT young person in their family, um, it's really about having those open conversations. I would strongly um, dissuade somebody from asking them a yes or no question right now, because if the young person is um, questioning and isn't quite there, not ready to come out, if you ask, are you gay, are you trans? And they say no, it makes it much more difficult for them at a later stage to tell you, well, yes, I am. And they may just not be ready yet. And it's not a, a, a failing on your part or in any way next to perfection. They just may be going through some other stuff yeah. to, um, um, and they'll tell you when they're ready. And in the meantime, it's about opening up conversations, mm -hmm. you know, watching films together with LGBT characters and um, making sure signaling signaling to that young person that uh, you are ac accepting and celebrate um, individuals who have uh, sexual orientations and gender identities that aren't the same as yours. And then they will feel it's safe mm -hmm. to talk to you about that when, when they're ready. That's great. It's, it's, it's lovely to listen to you both because, you know, you're, you're both coming from such a, a strength of position around advocating for people having ongoing conversations with feeling and with meaning that uh, can be purposeful and they, they start very much from you, you know just that sense of um, trying to forge some intimacy in conversations between uh, communities breaking it down into families or even a, a, a dyad having a conversation you know a young person and their caregiver their parent their aunt or their uncle so they can again, to repeat my earlier comment around bear witness to their truth and their story about who they are. And yeah, very, very, very important. If I was to broaden it out a little bit, just to think about, you know, this ongoing conversation that, you know, that, you know, is being invited to be had. How, how do you think, you know, I was thinking about the internalization of shame and the sense of uh, pain that that creates, emotional pain. What, what further work uh, do you think, and, and connected to that, the impact it will have on the mental health of the LGBT community needs to be done around structural or systemic inequalities in respect of, of the uh, LGBT community? Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, I think we need to make schools safe places, you know, so... Mm. Um, we do a lot of work in schools because young people spend a lot of time there and because the system is all, is was built in a time, schools were built and the curriculum was written and everything, you know, physical to the subjects, everything in a time when there was less acceptance about diverse gender identities and sexual orientations. 
So we need to make a positive conscious, uh, take positive conscious steps to make schools safe. And that's around curriculum being more inclusive. Sometimes the, the, the actual physical environs and buildings that schools are mm. teacher training so that teachers feel confident and competent to, to support LGBT young people, but also to address homophobic and transphobic bullying mm. in schools. Um, mm. and policies and practices all being changed. So we bring in a lens um, around LGBT, around diversity and inclusion more generally, really. So because schools were, I mean, they never were, but they were built to, to be very homogenous places um, with a, a particular uh, person in mind, you know, for a particular pupil in mind. So sure. we have to look at those system structures, I, I, I think is, is the number one thing. I think then it's around um, healthcare in more generally as well, you know, about mm -hmm. um, um, training, you know, I'm talking to friends who are in the, in the medical profession, there isn't enough training around LGBT identities and experiences. And so again, um, very often unwillingly or un unwittingly are uh, completely unconscious. Um, many um, practices and, and medical professionals are blind to and will therefore um, uh, make it feel unwelcoming, make their practice or make um, the interaction feel like, oh God, now I have mm. to come out to them. I don't want to have to come out to them. So that mm. adds to the stress of, you know, going in to have, you know, your broken elbow looked at or something like that, or, or going in to talk about a mental health problem. So th there's, and we can talk about ways we can, we can address that uh, later, but there's, so there's a lot of things in our systems, our structures, and, and even our legislation. So we talk about hate crime, yes. we talk about conversion therapy, um, you know, there's there's online safety. There's there's lots of stuff that needs to be done still, still um, to reduce, I suppose, um, the prejudice, unconscious bias, and 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 conscious victimization of LGBT people um, in in society. Thanks, Moninia. That's very helpful to hear. Yeah, very good. Thank you, and Paul. Have you any reflections on that point yeah. or what Moninia said? Yeah. Yes, I mean to certainly to 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 echo to echo Meninia's observations and and um, and call. Um, we're involved in UCD with a, a curriculum review, so beginning to look at the the curriculum, which um, by and large um, across a university with thirty thousand students, um, a curriculum that tends to be uh, dominated by um, white. Um, Western uh, middle class uh, men. Um, so it's it, and that's been a remarkable experience over the last few years. Just to look at even to look at my own little bit of teaching and think, gosh, I've been talking for years about psychological theory, uh, and in actual fact, um, so many of those theories were contributed to and initiated by women, for example, but they they've gotten sidelined. So, so at the, at those kinds of levels, so it is the that the, the curriculum been a, a mirror and a window, so we begin to see out into a different kind of world of diversity and inclusion. We find our place in it. So, so and and I think that goes at, at third level and in medical training and and right the way down to to primary school. So, so we've got a lot of work there and a lot of really good will. I mean, I really you know we just need a lot of good will. People saying, okay, what can we do? What can we do to 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 make this curriculum um, more inclusive? Um, and I think Meninia said there about the the you know even the kind of physical environment. So when you're um, when you're different, um, you, you're generally very sensitive to the environment, right? Because mm. we are different and we get anxious. So we're we're watching out. So a lot of gay people will be really, really, a lot of people of diversity will be really sensitive to the magazine that's in the corner of the waiting room, 
mm. or the little uh, the little LGBT the flag the diversity flag that might be in the corner of a window, mm. uh, or so it'd be really sensitive to um, maybe you know even paintings on a wall. So so I'd say that to kind of healthcare professions and, and professions in schools, and uh, but also to parents you know at home. Don't think those things are ever missed. The the yeah. A copy of GCN. They're, they're, no, so because because we're we're looking out we're looking out for indications that this is safe, mm. and, and scan really quickly. So 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 they those things are really really important. I mean, like last week, and I was walking over to I was walking in, into town, and and suddenly like the Department of Foreign Affairs and all these government buildings have big pride flags flying. Mm. 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 Yeah, they're mm. big ones. It's also the tiny little ones that we really do pay attention to too. And 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 do, sorry to slightly go back just a little bit. I'm very conscious of the conversation we had earlier on about younger people. Mm. It's really important to say that there will be a cohort of much older people who are coming out too mm. and are facing the same kinds of challenges, or people around them are facing the same kind of challenges. They're coming out because they grew up in an Ireland that was that used shame so efficiently to to diminish and constrict lives mm -hmm. so so there were people in their in their 60s 70s 80s who were coming out and and a lot of what we said earlier on it, it, it fits there too mm -hmm. um, finding your tribe finding someone you trust beginning a gradual conversation so i just i felt that was really very helpful paul yeah across the lifespan to, to uh, present yeah, in that regard yeah 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 um, and I'm, I'm often very um, and often, i had this conversation with a, a colleague of mine um, who's a little bit older than me and she uh recently divorced um herself unfortunately herself and her wife uh broke up and anyway she was in with her gp about something and or it wasn't her gp but anyway another medical profession and um, I was saying, oh, yeah, no, divorce. And the, the, the person that she was talking to was, you know, being very kind and sweet and was like, oh, well, we'll have to find you a nice man. And, um, you know, I suppose because she's an older woman, she was read as heterosexual, like the, you know, it, and, and the, 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 the funniest part about the story is this happened in San Francisco, probably the gayest city in the world, right? <laughs> so it, 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 it's to show that, and I use this to illustrate that, uh, the, the, that I talk because I work with young people about young people's experiences, but older people, especially at the, older end past uh, kind of midlife again face a lot of these these problems because mm. because you're old then you you can't have a sexual orientation you know or something like yeah. that so um uh, that's anyway different anyway so yeah. um it's really important i think for people to 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 bear that in mind i think it, it was it was incredible and she was just went ew no if you find me a nice woman or something like that, and mm. they, they realized the mistake and they were terribly embarrassed and, you know, um, but again, that's that unconscious bias. It's it's about nearly as, as, um, yeah. on your LGBT goggles or your lens to see what is what, how can I make my practice or how can I signal consciously in tiny little ways in my language or in, you know, little visible cues. Um, that I'm an ally and that it's safe. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Thanks, Monin. Yeah. Just to come to a couple of questions and comments that, that are coming through, um, just regarding uh, a recommendation, if you would have one, around uh, awareness or educational supports for hate crime and conversion therapy. Mm. It's pretty specific. I, I, I can speak a, I can speak a little bit about the conversion therapy because we, we uh, with uh, LGBTI Ireland have recently launched a campaign to ban conversion therapy, conversion practices. Um, mm. So, so to, to join, I think, mm. maybe 22 countries around the world where conversion therapy and that for people who don't know, conversion therapy basically is a, a practice that says I'm going to I'm going to make you heterosexual. Um, sure. Through, through 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 therapy, so we're working on legislation to to formally ban and prevent that because it damages people in ways that are unimaginable. Um, is uh, is uh, outlawed by 
every professional body, um, I think, across the world. So, so, so uh, LGBT Ireland are leading that campaign, and um, I'm I'm a little bit involved. So, um, to maybe to check that out. So that's 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 the place to go there. Yeah, and we've joined that coalition as well. So it's you know I think individuals as well as organisations can join that coalition, and I think it's really important that that we do it. And the 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 LGBT Ireland are are leading and um, the coalition in, in the Republic, and there's a, another campaign in the North of Ireland, and we're, we're collaborating because very often. Um, proponents, I suppose, of, uh, of um, conversion practices and um, work across the border with each other. Mm. So, um, so you can find out more information on the LGBT Ireland website. And then in relation to hate crime, I think our, I believe our submission to the Department of Justice is on, on our website. But um, again, we're part of a coalition um, working with other organizations um, um, who represent communities affected by hate crime. Um, and that's being led by the Irish Council for Civil Liberties, ICCL. ICCL, um, yeah, so very good. You can read more about um, how to get involved in that coalition or to or more about um, hate crime in general um, in, in Ireland and the campaign um, around trying to introduce um, a, a ban on, on hate crime and criminalised hate crime and, um, mm. and, and, and involved. Also then lastly, the other part that you might be interested in is um, the, the work that the Children's Rights Alliance is leading. We're also part of the coalition there. Um, you'll see a pattern here, but it's because so many different communities are affected by these same um, um, uh, issues, I suppose, hate crime, but also online. Um, so some hate crime, obviously, it, it, hate crime has to reach a, a criminal uh, level for it to become a crime, but there's still a lot of very damaging behavior that happens online um, uh, that isn't, wouldn't never reach a criminal, well, some of it would reach criminal, but some of it won't reach criminal level, uh, but it still should be banned and stopped and so um, belong to and a lot of other organizations have come together with Children's Rights Alliance to uh, try and introduce uh, the uh, online safety and media regulation legislation and that's again to try and make sure that platforms are properly regulated mm -hmm. take responsibility the online as far as i'm concerned somebody a, a wonderful lawyer in, in germany explained this to me once and i love sharing it we think of the online space as something scary you know and and different but it, actually it's just a shopping center like any other shopping center and if some if somebody says something nasty to you in a shopping center you can get the guards involved or you can get the people who run the shopping center involved to kick them out to deal with it it's no different to online platforms and that's what that's what the campaign is about so great yeah oh, thanks for sharing that a any another comment came in for uh seeking some supportive advice uh regarding uh having that conversation you know and it seems as though what we're saying here together the three of us for what that's worth, I suppose, is that it's an ongoing conversation, but actually coming out to parents, you know, is a specific question in relation to that and what your sense of that is. So is this a, a young person asking about coming out to parents? Yeah, okay. that's my sense of it, yeah. yes. Okay, so with lots of information on our website, belongto.org, and if you want to have a chat with a, a youth worker, please, you know, make contact and we can have a chat over the phone or you can... Um, come into one of our youth groups and, and have a chat. Um, right. uh, the, the biggest piece of advice, I think, is to uh, take your time and, um, you know, uh, to do it when you feel ready and not feel pressured into doing it. Um, and, you know, just make sure that you do it at a time where you're giving the other person plenty of time to take on board what you're saying, do it in a safe place, at a safe time, have your backup plan. So, you know, Hopefully, you know, the, 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 your parent will be accepting and even if they're, they need a bit of time, they might go away and think about it. So have maybe some a backup plan for mm. meeting a friend or chatting to a friend um, after you have that conversation as well to, to give you and your, your parent or your carer that little bit of, of, of time to, um, to go away and think about it. Um, mm. but everybody does it in a different way and uh, there's no right way or one way to, to come out. And as Paul said, you, you continuously coming out. So, but, uh, you know, 
having doing that with a parent um, you know take your time and 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 try it out i mean i would you know really strongly recommend making contact with, with one of our youth workers and great and and, yeah. and, and and you know practicing it if you, if you like before you're ready. the person has clarified that to say that they're a counselor working with young people so perhaps con a contact with your organization would be of benefit too just to yeah. develop awareness and in increase uh, that person's understanding go on paul yeah sorry yeah. sorry Minnie, you're talking yeah. you're there. I, and I, I i've said this before but i think some of those um students some of those difficult conversations you know they're probably some of the most important conversations in our lives. They're, I, I often suggest that people do them shoulder to shoulder. Um, so um, sitting in a car or going out for a walk or actually doing been in the garden or at a football match. Um, for, for many of us, the kind of immediate eye to eye thing initially can be uh, can be really challenging. So uh, the, the shoulder to shoulder. Um, I think is a really good place and I uh, as a parent as a child as an older is a really good place to start um, and, and maybe outdoors you know mm. yeah uh, plenty of space so and not a one-off you know I think I think uh, uh, yeah it's not cut and dry yeah lovely the process you know yeah process process we 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 and we kill ourselves by thinking oh this is the this is when it all has to happen and I have to mm. yeah yeah sure there was there was a comment there from uh, a, a man in in his 60s uh, an openly gay man wondering about supports or groups for people of that that age cohort or different thoughts or ideas you might have in that regard and um so Minion, if it's okay just the, the um lgbt ireland there there uh what there's a website and there's also a telephone uh, uh line i don't have the details now but for for people who aren't using the internet for example there's there's a telephone line and um, and so it's a really reliable place to find reliable information uh, and that's an important thing i think i'd say to everyone today just, just there's so much information out there not all of it is reliable so 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 kind of go to the bot the 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 perfect you know the representative bodies the lgbt Ireland belong to as a as a way to kind of filter out uh, sure. some stuff that would be unhelpful so to that kind of older man i think that would be a really good place to go they've done great work in pulling information together i mean Min Min i think would you yeah no absolutely that's where i go first as well and um and they have a long list of other organizations on their website lgbt.ie as well for things like running groups and all sorts of stuff so i mean you know some of us enjoy going to you know peer support some of us want to go and hike with each other or, or mm. um, you know have, there's, honestly there's a lgbt group for everything out there these days so um you know it's it's really about finding your tribe and um finding people with similar interests to you the great thing about the lgbt community and i love seeing it in here with the groups is a you know um it, it is a community where you see all types of people uh, mixing together in the way that you don't generally see maybe out in the the, the wider community so um people from all different backgrounds mm. and ethnicities and class and abilities disabilities all that kind of thing so um so it's lovely to just find your tribe and um, you know with something that you enjoy doing um, whether that's a sport or something cultural or whatever, um, um, you'll find a long list anyway on lgbt.ie or also Gay Community News, GCN, um, the magazine has lots of um, uh, groups as well in the back of that. So. Great, thank you. Just another quick comment there from, from the, uh, the audience, from the participants is, what advice would you give a trans person who's out at home but struggling with body issues and unsure about moving forward or, or, or how to move forward, perhaps. Yeah, so um, uh, we would, again, belong to this is, as a young person, a younger person like under 23, I would really suggest that they get in touch with us and get talking to uh, one of the youth workers. And then, you know, if we if, 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 if it's something that you would like to further explore with um, 
with a, a counselor that we can put you in touch, we can signpost you. If you're um, over 18 um, um, and um, wherever you're in the country as well, um, TENI, T-E-N-I, um, are um, an advocacy but also service providers uh, for trans support. So they um, run support groups, but also have lots of information um, and can signpost you for, um, if, if, if you, Feel like you need, you know, some counselling or some medical support around that. Um, you know, they they'll be able to signpost you. But but right now maybe it's just a bit of peer support and just having contact with somebody else. And as as Paul said, just speaking your truth to somebody else and and, yeah. and bearing witness to your experience and where you're at right now in terms of acceptance of your of yourself and um and and who you are. Thanks, Moninia. Paul, have you thought on that, or is there? Moninia, I think yeah, no, I think over to yeah, yeah. Echo, yeah, yeah, ditto. Right. yeah, yeah. Great, great indeed, yeah, yeah. There was a comment. So, so uh, this is back to this idea. I think from listening and just to kind of try and decipher some of the other comments that have come come through. It's about the the fluidity and ongoing nature of the conversation at a micro level and how that informs the macro picture or the bigger picture. So it's the individual group and group conversations speaking to what's going on in society and then the information that filters down from a societal the impact of society on us because we as individuals inform our society and our society informs us so i was thinking about that because a comment came in or two about the schools and what goes on in schools that uh you, you know the, the desire i suppose as i picked up the message for schools to be more inclusive and how that can happen so i suppose is is that down to kind of you know, developed information, awareness, conversations from parents, association groups, uh, speaking to the boards. How, how kind of ongoing conversations are so important in, in, in this regard? Absolutely. I mean, you can't change culture. We know this from organizations and schools are like organizations themselves. You know, they're like companies. You can't change culture. You can't change behavior unless everybody's involved in that conversation. Um, and so that means a whole school community approach needs to be taken. Yes. And so that involves staff, it involves students, it involves board and management, it involves parents, it involves the support structure around that school community. That could be the local um, LGBT group, the, the local youth mental health providers, what, what, whoever is around. Everyone needs to be involved in that conversation mm. and the change. And it doesn't happen overnight as well. Mm. Um, we, we have been supporting some schools going through a program called Safe and Supportive Schools. And it takes a full academic year. And it looks at all these various different things like curriculum, policy, practice, training, all that. It, it, it requires kind of top down and bottom up everybody to be involved. You need leadership, obviously, mm. you need the principal, you need the board of management on board. Mm. But it also, um, you know, very often um, uh, parents being champions and teachers being champions really, as well as students calling for it, really empowers leadership in a school to do what they want to do, but sometimes are uh, uh, maybe afraid of backlash you know it's, it, it's not you know it, it, it schools in ireland even though um you know there are very many school very less and less irish people are uh, particularly religious um there there may be less religion going on in, in schools but we still have a lot of that kind of hang up or throw back to um uh times when you know I suppose the the religious hierarchies control schools so sometimes it, it requires brave leadership to kind of go well sure. this is what's right irrespective of what the teachings are of the church in relation to to homosexuality so it does require I think everybody to be pushing in the right direction and um, um, to make schools safe and inclusive and the big thing about all this work as well is when you make a, a school safe and supportive for LGBT students, you make it safe and supportive for all students mm. because it's about seeing 
um, how you can improve the curriculum, how you can mm. improve policies, how you can improve, improve the environment to make sure it's inclusive for somebody who has a different life experience to the one exactly. that the system was designed for. Exactly. So once you open that door, you, you will forever then be thinking with that lens, it's, it's um, of, of who else you know, yeah. be thinking about. And yeah, the work goes on. This. Yeah. It's, it's ongoing and there's there's further work to be done by by the sounds of things and listening to you and from living as a an Irish person in an Irish man in society yeah I, I hear that and know that so mm. just to, to sum up I'm conscious we've only a, a, a couple of minutes left and you, you had mentioned around some uh, different ideas or resources or you know if you or if you wanted to uh, in some just give a, a, a you know a a, a final word, as it were, in relation to uh, uh, mental health in the LGBTI plus community and, and just your overall sense of that and where we're at and where we're going, maybe. Do you want to go first, Paul? Or? I, I, well, I mean, uh, thanks. I mean, I think, okay, so there's, there's two resources that maybe we can send on to people. Um, there's That'd a, be great. a really nice book um, on mindfulness and acceptance for gender diversity published a few years ago. It's really nice. And um, there's a really nice um, uh, document produced by the HSE a number of years ago, actually, but it's still very relevant. So I think they'd be really good links uh, for, for some resources for people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just to say for uh, anyone who's listening or tuning in that anxiety and depression and indeed shame um, don't have to be a life sentence. Mm. They really, really, really don't. There are all sorts of treatments and interventions that can alleviate anxiety, depression, and indeed shame. So, so it's please, please, please know that it's it, it, this does not have to be um, how the rest of your life is lived. Mm. Um, I think that's probably um, probably the most the most important thing that I'd like to say, actually, yeah, by way of conclusion. Thank you, Paul. Um, yeah, I would uh, this, this, um, suggest that people have a, a nosy around our website because it's loads of research and resources. And one of, one of the things on there is this Better Out Than In um, uh, booklet that we, we produced a number of years ago. And I think it's helpful for parents, carers, and anyone, I suppose, for, supporting an LGBT young person, especially um, in relation to their, their mental health. Um, it starts on, on the journey on how to be, I suppose, a good support, a good ally. And, and a bit like what Paul was saying, you know, I, I, one of the things I, you know, I love being LGBT. I, I you know, I, I love it. And I, uh, but I also have struggled with my mental health. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's not a life sentence, as Paul said. And, and the other thing is that, you know, it, it, I say to young people, it's, and it's, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, um abrupt so pardon pardon me if, if i said if, if it sounds this way but you don't have to wait until you have your suicide plan laminated to get help don't wait and and this all that help seeking behavior um you know i think a lot of elderly mm. people feel oh i i don't need it I'm, I'm taking somebody else's space all that kind of thing no you deserve to get the help and there's lots of organizations like aware and around who are just would love to help you and would love to support you way before it becomes really problematic crisis have yeah. a chat and have a chat with people now so that you can go on that journey and it's a continuous journey by the way um but you know uh of minding your mental health you know so so many of us not me but like enjoy the gym and and and, um, and um, all sorts of other exercise to look after our bodies. So look after our, we have to look after our minds too. And I think, you know, um, the, and I, I think I, I have to apologize that I think myself and belong to and other people in the, in the community, sometimes we've been so focused on trying to explain to people um, why LGBT people are, um, you know, at this increased risk of mental health problems that we focus all on that, on the negative. And, um, and there's so much more, there's so many positive yeah. things and ways we can be resilient. So go out and get that help. You're not taking up somebody else's space. There's lots of organizations and people that want to help you um, and you deserve it. 
Thank you. Thank you, Monin. Yeah, I find I find your passion and positivity most welcome. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's great. And thank you both very much, uh, Dr. Paul Dalton from uh, Clinical Psychologist from UCD uh, and St. Vincent's University Hospital and Moninia Griffith, the CEO of Belong To for your uh, company. As I hosted this conversation this afternoon, I, I, I got a lot from it uh, personally and also organizationally too, you know, to try and spread the message and to keep this conversation going because it's, it's very important. Um, our next webinar, you'll find more information on that on aware.ie. It's on perinatal mental health, and that will take place on the second Wednesday of uh, July. And if you want to keep up to date uh, and subscribe to our webinar mailing list, you can do so. Uh, you'll find out fo further information following on from the webinar as we finish up. And also you can get further information on our website, aware.ie. Um, you can watch the webinar back. Again, that will come the details on that will uh, be attended to um, with the follow-up email. Uh, and also, once this webinar is finished, we invite uh, you as participants to give feedback, and we'd be very grateful if you took some time to do so afterwards. It's a short questionnaire with your feedback. We'd be, uh, most, uh, be most helpful for us. And if you find that you've been impacted or affected by any of the discussion points in this webinar, we'd recommend that you reach out to a, an organization like Moninia's, uh, you know, uh, belong to or LGBTI uh, Ireland, if it's a specific issue for you. And, and also, you know, you have our uh, uh, website and our support services, aware.ie, to seek support from, as well as your GP, if a conversation with that person would be of benefit. Again, just to thank you uh, both so much uh, for the conversation this afternoon and wishing you all a, a lovely afternoon ahead. Cheerio, folks. Thank you.